Thanks for watching Numbskull News, and today we're going to get into all this college football mayhem going on. And if you're one of the few people watching this video, you're probably wanting to, you know, listen to somebody who's well-informed, well-connected. Well, guess what? All the well-informed and well-connected people don't know shit. <laughs> that's, just the, that's just the case. No one knows anything about anything that's going on. Everyone has little tidbits of information, so what I'm going to do is try to piece things together with my own opinion. I'm just some jackhole here in the middle of Big 12 country. So I'm going to give my opinion. Everyone else does. So this is the way I see how things are going. And let's start with the first thing, which is the Pac-12 is dead. They're dead. Now, everyone's trying to be nice about it. Everyone, oh, well, they could do this, you know, Alliance 2.0 and... Oh, they're, they're going to go and try to see if they can't get a new TV deal right now. All that is death throes. You know, when, when a body dies, all right, they're, they're still like the nervous system is still kind of working. They're still like, ooh, 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 jitters, you know, <laughs> even though you're dead, right? But there's still movement. Well, that's what's going on, right? Because the Pac-12 basically got shot in the back of the head by UCLA and USC leaving. And now it's just the body that can't figure out if it's dead or not. Well, it's dead. Now, how, how do I know they're dead? Well, when this happened to the Big 12 last year, okay, nobody wanted to touch the remaining eight teams. All right, the ACC told us to go to hell. Uh, the Pac-12 said, no, thank you. And, and you know, the, the Big 10, the SEC, sure as hell didn't want any of these teams. So they were forced to coalesce and come together they went out and got the best non-Power 5 conference teams they could. The same thing that happened to the Big 12 has now happened to the Pac-12. Unfortunately for them, now there's a conference in the Big 12 that will take teams. We're not going to face palm everybody. You know, we're not going to give everyone the big old stiff arm like we got. You know, we're willing to take Arizona and Arizona State. We're willing to take Colorado and Utah. And those first four teams... I wouldn't doubt it in the next few weeks you hear that they are coming to the Big 12. What can the Pac-12 do? Well, they got on the phone and they called TCU and Houston and Oklahoma State. And those teams had no interest in going to the Pac-12. They tried, you know, they thought about maybe merger with the Big 12. The Big 12 said, no thanks, we're good. Uh, the reason for that is because you're dead. <laughs> you don't want to move in a dead body into your house. It's gross. The Alliance 2.0 isn't going to work. It's the same reason that, you know, the, the ESPN Fox 30 day uh, exclusive <laughs> exclusive time to bid on the Pac-12 isn't going to work worth a shit. And they ain't going to get no money out of that. The reason why is because Oregon and Washington want no part of the Pac-12. They are not going to commit to that conference. Period. They won in the Big Ten. The Big Ten said, no, <laughs> we're not going to take you right now. All right, they're waiting on Notre Dame. They can't speak on the ACC. There's probably some kind of legal crap because, you know, those all those teams belong to a conference. They probably can't speak on them. However, however, they can talk all they want about Notre Dame. And so they're saying, hey, Notre Dame, wink, wink. Let's see what happens with these ACC teams. Because the SEC and the Big Ten, they're only going to take blue bloods from this point on. So all of this bull crap about, oh, those they're going to absorb all these teams. And, you know, what, what the SEC is going to be like 35 and, and, and the Big Ten is going to be like 35 teams. And no, they're, no, that's not what's going to happen. They're not going to split their pie up 35 ways. That's just dumb shit. Okay, they're going to take the biggest of the big teams into their conference and that'll be it. For right now, both conferences are perfectly happy with 16 teams that they have. They're, they're fine going forward. Now, if they can somehow get Clemson and Florida State, possibly Notre Dame, possibly Miami, maybe Virginia, maybe Virginia. I don't, I don't know if they're quite big enough if they fit the profile, but at least those big four schools out there, that's what the SEC and the Big Ten want, not Oregon, not Washington. That's neither here nor there. If Oregon and Washington will not commit to the Pac-12, well, guess what? How are you going to sell a TV deal if you're not going to have Oregon and Washington? Who gives a damn?
And with those four schools going to the Big 12, and they are going to go, the two biggest programs left in the Big 12 won't commit. So, of course, they're going to go. You go while the getting's good. And, you know, Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah, they all, all those programs know there's no way in hell they're getting into the SEC. They know they can't get into the Big 10. But the Big 12 wants you. It's better to be in the third biggest conference than a conference that's basically going to be absorbed into the Mountain West. So once those four, you know, two desert schools and two mountain schools are gone to the Big 12, and without any kind of real commitment from Oregon and Washington, then, you know, the Mountain West will take the teams they want, and then, you know, Stanford will probably go independent. Maybe Cal will too. So now let's move to the ACC. What's going to happen with them? That's a little bit more interesting because, as it turns out, from what, I, from what I've read, from what I've watched myself, from people who are in the know, teams like Clemson and Florida State, now it's a lot of money to get out of their TV contract. It's a 15 freaking year sorry ass contract. We'll do the math. 15 years on that TV deal, that's $1.5 billion. Are any of those programs going to make $1.5 billion in the ACC? The answer is no. So it would behoove them to go ahead and make that move. Now, from what I've heard, the ACC are going to try to push more money to those big schools, take it away from their small schools, in order to try to entice them to stay. But, I don't know. I still don't think that's going to work. I don't know if they can make up the difference or even get close. Even if they break even, it still may be worth it for Clemson and and Florida State to jet. All right, because they want to get into the big... big permanent secure conference the ACC is no longer secure now what could end up happening is Clemson and Florida State or whatever combination of those two schools you know pay their money and they leave now and I'm talking now I'm talking like within the next maybe month or two and then you know Miami and Virginia and everyone else you know they'll take bigger bumps in their pay and maybe they stick around but I think in the end, I think the ACC will survive. Everyone keeps saying that, you know, the SEC and the Big Ten, oh, they're just going to destroy college football. Well, they don't want to destroy college football. That's where they make their money. They don't want to, this thing's a national phenomenon. Division One football is freaking king. The only thing above that is the NFL. That's it. Well, last thing you want to do is alienate everybody. You're going to alienate some people with realignment, but you don't have to kill you know, you, you don't have to turn this thing into a regional sport like baseball. I think the SEC and the Big Ten are cognizant of that. You know, it's like all this talk. Well, they're just going to have their own championships. They're, you know, we're, we're not going to have a college football playoff. Of course you are. There's way too much money in the college football playoff. It makes all the financial sense in the world for that to expand. What they'll end up doing is they're, they'll expand it, but it'll go to eight. And that's where, that's where it'll stay is at eight for a long time. Probably 10, 15, 20 years. Who knows? But I don't think it's going to expand to 12 or 16 for a good long time. But they'll, they'll bring it up to eight because it's just too much money. They're making a killing right now just off of three playoff games, essentially is what that is. Two, two play-in games and then the national championship. Making a ton of money off of that. So to go from three to seven? <laughs> That's a shit ton of money, and of course, of course, they're going to expand to that. It makes all the sense in the world. But no, I don't think those two super conferences want to destroy college football or destroy all the other conferences. I don't think they, they have any interest in that. They have a, I think, actually, they want the other con- conferences to still do well. They just want those big teams <laughs> in with them so they can make the max dollars. But do, do they want the Pac-12 and the ACC and the Big 12 to just, you know, dissipate? No, they don't. So what'll happen with the ACC is they'll bring on some new teams, you know, maybe Memphis, you know, Boise State, who maybe they'll bring in Stanford, you know, who knows at, at whatever point, maybe that's 10, 15 years down the road, but they'll, they'll, they'll replace whom, whomever. And maybe they'll try to go after some big 12 schools. But I think at that point, the Big 12 will have established itself as the third power conference, the number three place to be. So if you can't get into the Big 10, you can't get into the SEC, you got a shot with the Big 12. So the Pac-12 will die off. It's gone. 
the ACC, they'll lose their major schools, but I think they'll survive. They'll they'll be a lesser conference. They'll they'll kind of sink back into the group of five, which will be turned into the group of six. Uh, the Big Twelve will continue to be a power conference because they'll continue to add some teams. They may they may poach a team or two from the ACC. You know when they finally implode in ten or fifteen years, I think it'll take that long. I don't think you'll, I don't think they'll lose four teams right off the jump. I think, but they have a chance of losing one or two, pretty quickly. And Notre Dame, you know, everyone says, "Well, we're, we're waiting on Notre Dame." Well, <laughs> go ahead and wait. You know, all your hair goes gray like mine because Notre Dame is going nowhere. They're, I'm sorry, they're going to stay independent. They they could get into the football college football playoff now. They don't need to be in any kind of conference at all in order to get there. Unless you want it, you know, the conferences to have like automatic bids, then maybe they go. But if you're talking strictly monetary money, they don't need to join the big 10. And you can say, man, that's insane. They can make like a hundred million a year. Look, they got their own TV deal. That's revenue. They got a, a massive fan base. That's revenue. And let's not forget, this is the biggest <laughs> Christian university possibly in the world if not number two or three overall and if you're talking about just this hemisphere oh no doubt the biggest if you're talking just football oh yeah as far as division one there's a lot of Christian schools out there you know but TCU Christian kind of in name only same thing with Baylor same thing with probably you know Tulsa you know, whomever, SMU, but there's only really two schools that actually take their demographic of Christianity really seriously, and that is Notre Dame and BYU. And you can say, well, BYU joined a conference. Well, because it, it helps them, all right? It really does. They're nowhere near the level of Notre Dame. Notre Dame can sustain itself fine. Now, BYU can too, but no, nowhere near the same level. And what no one is taking into account, I, I don't understand why, because Notre Dame's a Catholic school. You want to, I mean, you're like, you talk about Big Ten money, let's talk about Vatican money. <laughs> there's no comparison to Vatican money. They don't need the Big Ten. The Big Ten wants them. They can, they, that's why they've always been independent. That's why they don't join conferences. They ain't got to. They don't want to answer to, to, to the Big Ten. They don't want to answer to Ohio State or Penn State. They don't want to answer to anyone in the ACC either. They'll play football. They'll schedule with you. But no, you can't tell them what to do. They listen to the Vatican. <laughs> that's, that's it. They'll take orders from the Pope. The Pope! That's the only institution that they are bound to at all. Now, believe me, that's a big deal. Look, I know Alabama and Texas and OU and Ohio State, Penn State, you know, uh, USC. They're they're all bound by money. They're all that that's their god. That's that's what they're going after. That's not Notre Dame, folks. Their god is the actual god. <laughs> all right, they will listen to the Pope. If the Pope says join the Big Ten, they'll join the Big Ten. Until that time comes, they're not going to join the Big Ten. So after all of that, like I said before, I'm in big I'm in Big 12 country. So what does this mean for the Big 12? Well, I think they're going to get those four schools. They may have to wait on Oregon and Washington, maybe even as much as a year. But this time next year, Oregon and Washington are going to have to shit or get off the pot because their their TV right deal for the big for the Pac-12 is going to that's going to go up. And they're already losing four schools. That's going to already be on the table. That's already going to be factual and happening. And I think a year from now, that maybe they'll get it through their head that the Big Ten doesn't want you. Sorry. They just they just don't want you. They don't need you. So if that's the case, well, guess what? There's only one place left to go, and that's the Big 12. And I think they will eventually commit to the Big 12 long term. There's still a small outside chance that the Big Ten will take them, but they're going to have to take a pay cut. All right, let's say Ohio State and USC and Penn State and a few other schools are making the $100 million, 110 whatever it is, a year. Uh, they'll tell Oregon, okay, 
you want to be in this conference so bad, I'll tell you what, you're cut 75. Which, by the way, that's more than you're going to get from the Big 12. And it would be. And it'd actually be a good deal for them to take, you know, a little bit of a haircut there and go ahead and go into the Big 10. And they'll probably do that. So, possibly, if Notre Dame is, they find, you know, Big 10 finally, you know, okay, okay. Notre Dame's not coming. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay. You know, Oregon, Washington, we'll take you. You got to take a haircut. And maybe they do that. But like I said before, I don't think the SEC and the Big Ten are these big evil freaking big evil empires that they keep being made out to be. You know, what's well, Russia? <laughs> you know, one of those kind of deals. I don't think they are. Because remember, Texas and Oklahoma called the SEC. It wasn't the other way around. The SEC wasn't looking to expand like that. But when the opportunity came up, they'd be stupid not to. And the same thing with USC. USC calls the Big Ten. Big Ten like, oh shit. Oh yeah. Of course. So the Big 12, with addition of those, the, those four schools, they'll definitely be a 16-team conference. And I think they won't go anything further than that unless they can get a long-term... Uh, agreement with Oregon and Washington, which I think that itself is a 50-50 proposition. I think the other other four schools, a lot of people say, well, that's a 50-50. No, it's not. That's a certainty. That's going to happen. Now, what the Big 12 might do at that point is say, okay, there's 16, possibly 18 teams. Maybe we wait and see what happens eventually with the ACC, but that's 10 or 15 years down the road. Uh, if I were them, I wouldn't wait. I mean, this this is, this is just me saying, now, I don't think this is going to happen, but this is what I would do if if I can get Oregon and Washington along with the other four Pac-12 schools and get up to 18. I want to get to 20. To me, 20 is kind of a good number for the Big 12 because you have no blue bloods, but you have a lot of good programs and you have a lot of emerging markets coming up. And a lot of teams on the come up. So that's this, is, this could be a really fun conference. And it offers a lot of value as opponents for the Big Ten and the SEC. And that's a lot of revenue. And a lot of TV value in the Big 12 with those 18. But I would take it to 20. I wouldn't wait. Because you got to wait 10 or 15 years to see what how the ACC is going to play out. Why do that? Because you're not going to get Clemson, you're not going to get Florida State, you're not going to get Miami, you're probably not going to get Virginia. Very outside chance of that. Maybe they could absorb Virginia. Maybe. But to me, it's like, okay, why wait all that time for Virginia? <laughs> you already got West Virginia. You know, maybe Virginia Tech too. I, I, I don't know. What, you're going to quarter corner the Virginia market. Let's get all the Virginia teams. It's not worth a 10 or 15 year wait for all that. So... Essentially what I would do, just because you got your own media rights deal coming up, I would, you know, after you get the Pac-12 teams, get the 18, I would take Memphis. I would stay ahead of the curve. Get Memphis, get Boise State. And there's only one reason to do that. Okay, I'm here in Texas, Dallas-Fort Worth area. This place is exploding, right? Because there's a great mass exodus out of California. Out of New York. I mean, that's like all day long. I swear I see a dozen California license plates and a dozen New York license plates every day. When Houston is growing like crazy. Austin and San Antonio are exploding. The whole state's exploding. Well, guess what? There's a couple other places in the nation that are also exploding. One of them, Boise, Idaho. The other, the entire state of Tennessee, but especially Memphis. So those are two huge emerging markets that I would love to see come into the Big 12. And no, they don't add a ton of value right now. But you have to look down the road 10 years, 20 years. What do those teams look like? They could be the next Oklahoma States. And I wouldn't doubt it if they were. But they could also be the next Oregons, folks. Are they going to be Blue Bloods? Probably not. But they could be legitimate, legitimate teams here in the Big 12. And that's, that's what you got to look, look for as well. Because you're not going to land any Blue Bloods. That was the whole point of taking BYU and Houston and UCF 
and Cincinnati. And get look what you're getting. You're getting a Cincinnati team that just went to the college football playoff. You got UCF that probably should have went. They were undefeated two years in a row not that long ago. And Houston has been a good team in a huge market. I know that market is owned by A&M, but that can change, folks. <laughs> I mean, they can, they can rise up. Now, look, they'll never overtake A&M in Houston, but they can get a hell of a lot closer than they've been. Anything's possible for the Big 12. Now, and I think there's a lot of value being the third most powerful conference, and I think that's what they're going to end up being. But I do have to talk about this. I did hear one really stupid-ass thing, <laughs> which... Uh, of course, it came from, you know, someone uh, out in Pac-12 land, which was, hey, the Pac-12 and the ACC and the Big 12 should all merge together and never play Big 10, never play SEC. It's <laughs> only a Pac-12 fan will come up with that bullshit. Absolutely not. Or absolutely not. There is too much money to play Alabama. And there's going to be too much money to play Texas and Oklahoma. You think these Texas schools don't want to play Texas and Oklahoma just because they left the conference? Hell no. Baylor still wants to play them. T TCU and Oklahoma State? Oklahoma State and o Oklahoma, of course they're going to continue to play. That's a good rivalry. And, of course, the Big 12 would love to play the Big uh, Big 10 schools. A lot of, you know, play some of those non-conferences. You don't have to play them all. <laughs> but, yeah, give me you know, give us Penn State. How about TCU versus Wisconsin? You know, uh, Baylor versus Nebraska. Of course. You know, Michigan versus Houston or, or Cincinnati or whatever. There's too much money to be made to not play those schools. It's the dumbest damn thing I've ever heard. And like I said, it had to come from some dumbass Pac-12 guy. <laughs> I hate to say a, a dumbass, but that, that's just... I'm, he's probably not a dumbass, but that was a stupid idea. Like it, 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 it pays too much money to play those schools and to play those conferences. And that would be the greatest value for the Big 12. And I'm not saying the Big 12 needs to be fodder for those, those two conferences. But those two conferences do need non-conference schedules against quality opponents. Now, they'll still be favored. Okay, fine. They'll still be favored. But Houston can be dangerous. You know, Baylor... I mean, that's not an automatic win. That, that, that team is tough. Oklahoma State? Oklahoma State can come up and get you. UCF can get you. So, all, all I'm saying is there's a lot of value here. You know, and if you add Utah, Utah can get you too. So, there's a ton of value for the Big 12 to play those conferences and get that money. Anyway, that's all I got on this crap. You know, maybe I'll make another video when some other shoe drops whenever. But for now, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with some other crap some other time. Bye.